Well, President Obama's in Detroit right now, expected to talk about the so-called fiscal cliff deal, but he may also weigh in on Michigan's just passed right to work law and the big changes now in store for a state considered the birthplace of organized labor. Tomorrow, Michigan's Republican governor is expected to sign into law legislation that will bar unions from taking mandatory dues out of workers' paychecks. And many are asking how we got to this point in Michigan, of all states. Joining me now, Bernard Whitman, former pollster for President Bill Clinton and author of 52 Reasons to Vote for Obama, or why people should be glad they voted for Obama, I guess after the fact, uh, Bernard, and also Gretchen Hamill, who's the executive director of Public Notice. Uh, panel, welcome to you both. Okay, so this is, this is something. I mean, we've seen these uh, right to work states becoming more and more popular. It's almost half the states in the union now that are going right to work. Um, and yet, Michigan, right? I mean, Gretchen, let me start with you on this as the, as the Republican. Does that surprise you that a state like Michigan would go right to work? Well, you have to look at the past few years in Michigan, and they've had some of the highest unemployment rates over the course of the past few years, reaching nearly 15 percent and currently 9.2 percent. So you, you see a state there that has an economy that is struggling and, a, and wanting to put into place measures that would create some economic economic growth and that's what this right to work measure would do it would allow companies to come there and make them more attractive to coming there and doing business in michigan bernard what does this say to you about the strength of the union movement in this country well you know i think the bill should be called a right to get something for nothing rather than a right to work <laughs> bill and the reason why is that every single worker at a unionized facility is covered and they get the protections of worker safety they ensure are insured uh, a living wage they are ensured that they get decent benefits and it shows that we need to do more to educate the public uh, on exactly what the benefits of the unions are. But I will say this, you know, we have had union membership in the United States drop about half uh, in the last generation from over 20 percent to just under 12 percent. But support for unions has actually gone up four points in the last few years. It now stands at 52 percent. So I think the governor is going to face some serious political fallout, and I think the House and the Senate are as well. And it's, we'd be smart to remember that the success of the auto bailout, which saved uh, almost a million and a half jobs and saved almost $100 billion and helped elect President Obama, particularly given him wins in Michigan and Ohio, this was done through unionized workers. And so I think a union workforce is a strong workforce. But Gretchen, you can still join the union, right? If you, yeah, if you, you think all those great things that Bernard thinks, you can join the union or in a right to work state, you cannot. Absolutely. This gives the, you know, the workers the freedom to choose what they want and what they want to do with their money and if they want to join a union. But to go back what he, to what he said, that this would be something that the voters will have retribution against the governor, they had an opportunity this past November to actually vote against right to work with protect our jobs, which was a ballot measure that would have had an amendment to block right to work as an amendment to the state constitution. They rejected that 57 to 42 in a state where they know unions, where unions were born, they rejected the ability to block this right to work amendment. So this shows that the public wants to have the opportunity to attract more businesses to the state and to have a more friendly environment. What do you make of the right to work amendment? John Fund, uh, previously the Wall Street Journal, was on, uh, now he writes for the National Review, was on our air earlier today, and he pointed out that Indiana, neighboring state Indiana, which went right to work, added 14,000 jobs in manufacturing last year. Mm -hmm. Michigan lost 8,000. And he said it's numbers like that, as Michigan sort of looking around at its neighbors, that led to this uh, support for, the, for right to work that Gretchen points out we saw at the ballot box in November. Uh, you know, I don't really believe that that's true. I think that, the, frankly, I will give the right to work folks credit. They do a great job of messaging this, but we ought to be honest here because right to work is nothing more than a backdoor attempt to defund unions, cripple the ability to provide services, and protect workers because it requires unions to continue to provide all the service that they do for the entire plant, yet only get dues from a certain amount of people that choose. Uh, to be able to, to contribute even though they're getting all the benefits. So it really is an, an effort to try to put a stranglehold on unions and try to force unions well, out. Let, which me jump in and ask you this, Bernard. let me jump in and ask you this, Bernard. What, is, there, is there some hybrid compromise where the unions could provide the work, get the benefit from those who choose to be in the union, but not 
provide the benefit for those who aren't paying for it? Only if you have two contracts, contracts among unionized workers and contracts among non-unionized workers. I don't really think that that is the right approach. What I do think the right approach is, is for unions to negotiate in good faith with management or municipalities, in the case of public unions, on increased cost sharing for uh, retirement benefits and health care. That has to happen. That has given unions a bad name. And I think if we get some negotiations where we can uh, ensure that workers contribute a more of a share for their health care and retirement costs, then we're going to be able to flip the balance back to where it ought to be. One of the things that people object to, Gretchen, in being forced to join a union in the non-right-to-work states is how the union bosses choose to f spend the fees, mostly yeah. on political activities, they say, as opposed to providing union benefits. Yeah, and I think we this past election it shows just that that unions played a big part in reelecting President Obama, and that's why so many expect him to say something about this today. But union dudes should be going to what they should to the workers, and they're not. They're going to political activities. And to what he said earlier about crippling and crippling unions, unions have actually crippled businesses. Just look what they did to Hostess. They are basically bankrupting that company, and because of it, we're not going to have any Twinkies or Ho-Hos this Christmas. <laughs> Bernard, what, are the unions, um, you know, as, as, as much of a service as they have performed for, for certain workers throughout the history of this country, um, sometimes they make decisions that, that result in a lot of sort of blowbacks or they seem like self-inflicted wounds uh, that may have led to some people thinking nah, maybe they're not as great as I thought they were I want your thoughts on it because we covered earlier in the show uh, the unions protesting outside of a cancer benefit you know and and we talked about earlier uh, this year how they went on the lawn of a Bank of America executive and his son was cowering inside by, inside by himself and they're chanting outside and you know those kinds of things may not help their appeal to the grander public. Sure, Megan. I, I think that those types of strong-arm tactics are inappropriate whichever side of the argument you're on. But I think the greatest thing that unions can do to win back more support from the public and, frankly, from companies and government is to negotiate in good faith and recognize that the percentage of uh, monies uh, that the uh, workers are going to need to contribute for health care and retirement is going to have to increase. The numbers are there. We're going to do the same thing with Social Security. We're going to do the same thing with Medicare. I think ultimately there will be means testing for Medicare, and there should be. So we're going to have to have greater cost sharing for these uh, expenses, and I think unions taking a leadership position on that instead of fighting it tooth and nail are going to allow unions to function properly and gain support back from both management and municipalities. Well, it's interesting. They're not going to undo this in, in Michigan unless they undo the uh, the choices they made for their uh, political leaders and we shall see what they decide on that. Bernard Gretchen thank you both. Thank you Megan. Thank you.